creating a task. I'll demonstrate this feature using a Windows task. From the navigation pane, select the task type which you wish to create and then either fill in the form at the bottom of the window or select the new button from the top window. This will open the form in a new window. There are only three required fields in Windows and Unix tasks. The first one is the name of the task. The second required field is the agent, which I'll select from the drop-down list. And finally, the third required field is the command field. We'll look at the other fields on this form in a different session. Now that the required fields have been completed, we can choose either Save, which will save the current form and close the window, Save and New, which will start a new window, or Save and View, which will save the current form and keep its window open. We'll choose Save and View. Now that we have saved the task, a Launch Task button has appeared. Notice that there are several tabs at the top of the window. To launch the task and create a new task instance, click on Launch Task. The task has now been launched, thereby creating an instance of the task. A task instance is an independent running copy of the task which was launched. When we click on the Instances tab, we see a list of all the instances of the tasks that have run, and we can select the instance of the task that we are interested in seeing the details of. Note that the fields in this window are the same as the fields in the task definition itself, with the addition of the gray fields. These show us information related strictly to the current instance, including the status and some other options, like those which appear at the bottom of the window. After a task has run, we may be interested in the output from the task. Notice there is a tab labeled Output. Also note that when the tabbed window has information contained on it, there will be a green dot instead of a gray one at the top. So, as you can see, the output has not been automatically retrieved from the agent. This is, by design, for efficiency. There is an option to automatically retrieve the output, but this time we'll do it manually by clicking on the Retrieve Output button. In the dialog box, we choose whether we wish to retrieve either standard output, standard error, or both, and the number of lines to retrieve. We may optionally include text in the Scan Text box, in which case it will only retrieve the lines which contain that text. It's important to note that most text fields in the controller can be populated using regular expressions. When we select Submit, the output is retrieved and displayed.